it was a situation where somebody needed to step up or watch this species absolutely go extinct before our very eyes. The zoo recognized a problem and we wanted to help. We wanted to help however we could. There was a dispute over whether red wolves were really a subspecies of intermixed coyotes and wolves. And um, Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium took the gamble and said, no, we think this is the real deal. They need our help. And so over the years, our zoo played a critical role in breeding the endangered red wolf. Without uh, their commitment, the red wolf would not have been preserved, it would not have been saved, and uh, we'd be talking about uh, an extinct species rather than an endangered species. The final population was considered to be 14 individuals. You know, that's a small, very small population. It's just amazing to think that a population that might have numbered in the millions got that low. That really is the brink of extinction. It, it was a unique position for a zoo, especially the, a zoo the size of PDZA, to become involved in such a, an iconic recovery program. It's really the thing that has put Point Defiance Zoo Aquarium on the map in terms of our conservation community. Because the red wolf population started out so small, the scientists involved with it and the population managers involved with the program recognized at the very beginning that they would need to use science and reproductive technologies to be able to assist the population. Those animals were actually taken out of the wild and put into zoo-based breeding projects rendering them essentially extinct in the wild. There were no animals left in the wild at all. And we were able to develop techniques for freezing genetic resources, and we actually were able to produce a litter of pups from artificial insemination. The challenges of red wolf recovery have been starting with such a small population, so you have a limited gene pool. And so when you're dealing with an inbred population, everything starts to fall apart, and that's a major challenge for us to try and, and head off. If over time we carefully manage those populations, a measure of that diversity can be regained by that species. We have the technology, it's been developed, it's not been refined, and we really need to take it to the next step if we're going to be able to use these reproductive technologies in the recovery of the species. And that's where we're at this kind of critical tipping point. If we don't continue the work and take it to the next level, we won't be able to use the technology in the species. So we really need to be able to continue on with this work, refine it, and actually start using the, the Genome Resource Bank for artificial insemination to be able to help with the recovery of the species. We had a species that was on the brink of extinction. We brought it into the zoo-based program, and we were on the road to recovery. Stories like this is really what energizes our, our conservation peers out there. So uh, to hold this out as a, as a shining example of success is something we're very proud of. With all of the resources we have available, if we can just put them all together, all those pieces of the puzzle together, and make it come together, we will be able to recover this species.